Hey, this is Jack from Alpha Charts with a state of the market video. Today is February 25th, 2023. Before we get started, this video is for informational purposes only. These are not recommendations to buy, sell, or hold any stock or security. Now, I may hold positions in some of the equities mentioned. Know your time frame and risk tolerance. Um, you'll find me on Twitter at AlphaCharts365. If you don't follow me there, go ahead and do that because I post all kinds of ideas and, and scams and stuff all week long. So it's um worth it. And if you really like my content, please uh, become a, a super follow on Twitter, right? Um, you find that on my profile. But the minimum, like and subscribe to my channel. And I that would be amazing. You just subscribe to my channel. So I appreciate that. All right, let's get going to these charts. Um, we have a VWAP from the high. We have a VWAP from the low. And you see how price is kind of now pinching between the two of them. Uh, this is the 200-day moving average which is right at the VWAP from the low as well. So 39.30 to 39.40, that area is the must-hold line in the sand, right? If price closes below 39.30 on the SPX, I think that uh, that the bull case is is in big, big trouble, right? Big, big trouble. I'm gonna just... So, you know, as long as we're above 39.30, though, we still have a flattening 200-day moving average, and we still have a bull case alive, right? So we'll see. It, it, it you know, it's big move down. You know, we may get a bounce next week. The question is, in the bounce, where does it go, right? There's your 50-day right there, and there's your short-term moving averages crossing bearishly right there. I mean, so does it a strong bounce? Does it break, you know, any of these moving averages? Not, it, there's a lot to, to, to look at um, going next week. I wouldn't expect... I would not expect this. I, I would expect a bounce. Let's put it that way. Next week, I'm expecting some sort of bounce. How strong that bounce is, is going to be really, really important. On the week, it was down 2.67. Now, again, this is a pretty nice looking base, right? If you, if you say, hey, nothing's really broken yet, I can. you can make that argument. It's a good looking base. And, and so, you know, let's not get overly bearish until we get a, a substantial break one way or the other. Um, looking at the RSP, it was down 2.77 on the week. And, you know, it's about the same as SPX. Um, hasn't quite made it to the 200-day like the SPX. Again, this is the equal way to S&P 500. Um, but again, still has that bearish look and underneath the 50-day and, you know, again, but above this flattening 200-day. So again, it's in this no man's zone chop range whatever you want to call it and that's a problem right so uh so right now again not very conclusive in its price action Q's came back down to the 200 day it did hold there as well so again so we have holding on the spx of the 200 day holding on the Q's of the 200 day now of course the 50 day is still rising because it's just been such a weak index comparatively right so the 50 day hasn't even crossed the 200 day yet um but again this is an area where you could expect a bounce now what that bounce looks like you know we, we don't know yet obviously but you know not the time in my opinion to be overly bearish because we just came from you know 314 to 290 right and again this 290 is is one of those like really important areas I don't know why my um, drawings aren't coming up. Let me just go back in there and see if that matters. That changes anything. Anyway, it doesn't matter really. Um, the point is this, you know, 290 is really the line in the sand here. You, you could even make it down to 285 potentially, but anything low, there they are. Look at that. Just like a second for trading view to pop them all in, right? This is the area that we're looking at, right? Um, a break below 290 or 285-ish, and I think things could get really, really bad, really, really fast. Because again, we talked about last week, you know, lower highs, lower highs, lower highs, lower highs. This could just be another lower high within the context of the downtrend. And, and that's what we talked about. The same thing on SPX when we go back, right? This is just potentially a lower high, one, two, three, four, within the context of a downtrend. So... You know, that's that that was something that we've talked about. Uh it was down three percent the queues on the week. Equal weights were down three point two seven, so a little bit worse. 
you see the Qs were actually stronger, the equal-weighted Qs, than, than the uh, cap-weighted Qs, which is, uh, which is cool. But now we're underneath the VWAP from the high. Um, we still have a rising 50-day, and this 200-day is starting to turn, right? So that's a positive on the equal-weighted Qs, as long as price can stay above the 200-day. I think, you know, there's a chance of, of a bull case, Price below this 200 day and the bull case is for the most part out the window, right? I mean, you, you can't be bullish with price below a flat 200 day moving average. I mean, there's no way. IWM, at least on a swing traders time frame. So IWM, again, we have the flat 200 day, but price between these moving averages and lower highs along the way. So, you know, that's a problem. Also, back below the VWAP from the um, high right over here. Again, we don't like that at all. It's been resistance all the way, you know, and again, did very similar action to here. And so now, uh, now we'll see what happens next week, right? 184 is a big spot. And then 180, you know, it's not that far below, right? So Three, another three, three and a half percent. Again, I'm not saying things are going straight down, even though they, they could. I'd more expect, you know, some wobble or chop in here and then a decision one way or the other. Well, IWM, you know, again, it's in that no man zone. Looks just like IWO, right? In that no man zone. Um, again, but lower highs and we have the, the, the decline right there. Again, is this some kind of bull flag? Uh, to me, this is going for too long for this to be a bull flag. So, you know what I'm saying? So usually bull flag, it was just this little piece right here. I would potentially say yes. And then it popped out, right? right? And then it came back and, and went higher there, but it didn't. And so it went lower. So I don't see this as a bull flag, even though this 200-day is starting to curve up on the IWO. And that's, that's bullish, right? You know, we start to get a rising 200-day. Now, price breaking below it, which turn it, would turn it back to flat to down very quickly. And that would be a problem again. So again, in that no man's zone, MDY is what I wanted here. And here's the mid caps again. You know, my favorite of the bunch, we're already getting a rising 200 day, which is very bullish. Um, price is breaking down, obviously. It was down on the week 2.43. Again, outperformed comparatively to the other uh, indexes. By the way, IWM was down 2.91. Um, so there's that. And let's go back to the daily. And again, with a rising 200-day, that gives the bulls a chance as long as price can stay above, well, at this point, 446. And again, I have kind of the stage analysis, the way I see it, developing right here, right? So stage three, um, was the topping area stage four downtrend stage one is base building stage two is new uptrend right question mark i really want to see price above you know five hundred dollars to really say we're in a stage two but i do like the i mean the 200 day is turning up again i can't get overly bearish with this 200 day starting to rise now I can't get over bullish because we've had some nasty price action, right? So it's that nasty little chop zone where things are going to be, you know, um, frustrating to bulls and bears, in my opinion. Looking at some ETFs, let's see what XLF did. XLF on the week, down 2%. And um, and so we had this kind of like this base breakout right there. And again, trading views being very slow today. There they are. There it is right there. And this was a breakout. So is this just a retest for the financials? 50-day held, and now we bounce higher, right? I mean, that's the bull case, right? So if we see next week that we see the financials recovering and starting to move higher, and the 200-day starting to turn back up again, right? That's the bull case. That this was a nice bottom for them, and we just this was a retest of the breakout, and we go higher. XLF does not have to lead, but we like to see it participating for a healthy market. Um, XSD is the semiconductors. And on the week, they were down 2.33%. 
And again, you have a rising 200-day moving average on XSD. Again, a lot of people use SMH, and I used to use SMH. I like XSD a little bit better, um, but we'll just compare the two. Uh, that was down 1.88%. Again, NVIDIA had earnings and did very well, which, again, is cap-weighted, so that's that makes a difference. But you see it's got a flat 200-day for XSD, it has a rising 200 day. So we like, I like that personally. So again, is this a retest of the breakout? And now we move higher? Or is this going to be some kind of failure? And we, and this is a false breakout. That's what we're watching for. Same as XLF, really. Um, same situation. So we'll see what happens here. But again, this is a beautiful bottom if this holds and it's just a retest. That makes this area even more important and stronger. So we got to watch for that. Um, transports. Transports were down almost 3%. Um, and again, you know, they still have a declining 200-day. They've been a little bit weaker. You know, we expected a pullback. I, I drew these in last week, I think, or maybe a couple of weeks ago. Um, there's your pullback. 50 days still rising. We got the cross. The question is, again... You know, does this 50 day hold? And do you think, you know, is this just building energy for the true breakout, right? Because we said that this was way too far, not to, you know, transports looked like they need to pull back and maybe get a breakout. So that's what we're watching. Does this 50 day $74 hold on the transports? Again, almost just a retest, right? So that's where I, and retests are, are tricky because we don't know, right? It could go either way. It's so hard. They're, they're so hard. XHB. The retest, right? No, if my there we go. Um, again, there's your 50 day, it's hold the 50 day, and the question is, is this just a retest? And then we go higher. We'll know next week, probably we'll have a better inclination next week than we do this week. But that would be the bull case scenario, right? That we just shook out excessive bullishness over the last couple of weeks, and March is a great month. But we don't know that yet. We got to see some data come in, right? Last week of February is next week, uh, first you know, starting March. But in home builders, we do have a rising um, 200 day, which is kind of nice. And so again, this could just be a retest of the breakout. So a lot of retests on all the index on, on the on the ETFs that I follow. So there's not conclusive evidence yet of a bull market, and it could go either way. And that's that's the hard part right we want to see conclusive evidence and and we just don't have it at this point uh, let's look at the internals here's the vix vix is still low at 21.68 which which gives the edge to being a bullish market now if 23 gets taken out right that's a different story right we would get more bearish as this continues to move higher um, but right now, it's not in a high-ish range. It's a very reasonable range, the VIX. And so uh, it's been there basically the entire year in this general area. And so there's nothing really to say that there's a problem um, at all. Let's see what bond yields did. I'm really interested in this. They came back in, right? So credit spreads came back in. We're still in this little consolidation area. You know, and if you really look at longer term, you know, we're not seeing this type of damage happening to credit spreads. We're seeing the exact opposite. And it's just consolidating within the context of this area right here. So we don't know, right? I mean, whichever way this breaks, though, that's some, potentially could be a very big deal, right? Again, it could go sideways more, of course. I drew these lines, right? The market doesn't draw the lines. But to me, this is just a really tight consolidation. And, uh, and, you know, potential problem coming up. So we'll, we'll see, you know, or, or not problem, right? If this starts to decline, gets below 1 1.5, 1.51, 1 1.5, you know, that would tell you that the, that the monetary policy is, is, is fine, right? Because credit spreads are, are declining. So it is what it is, right? Let's look at put call ratio. You know, so a little bit, um, push higher to the bearish side but not extreme yet again when, it, when trading view decides to populate there we go not extreme but you are seeing that push to the bear and, and it has more room to go so don't be shocked if you see this go high i would love to see a spike like this or like this because that is a risk on contrarian indicator right 
And you saw the month of December as we got more and more bearish, you know, the month of January was great. So wouldn't mind seeing contrarian indicator get in here and that give me some some more um confidence that that we could get a nice strong bounce and, and the bull market may have more legs. And let's look at MMFI, percent of stocks above the 50-day. We are seeing, again, continued deterioration in breath. Uh, still above 50%, which is fine. Um, and you can see back in you know, December, it got down to in the 30s, right? 32, 33. Uh, and so we could re-see that. Again, a, a major shift down to this area as a contrarian. That's a great spot to consider longs. Um, and you see you did very well if you did that. Again, after a decline, when you start to take out the highs, you see it was a very good time to get long as well. So so we're watching this to see where breath starts to dig in and take hold. We don't see that quite yet. And again, the dollar is probably leading everything. Look at that spike up right there in the dollar. You see this area right there, the 102, 103 area. And this push higher is really... Um, really driving this decline in the stock. So if this can reverse course, right? If this reverses course, I think that that will help um, the market in general. Uh, it continued higher. You know, listen, it could go to size 119 or 120, right? This is just potentially a retest of the breakouts, right? Whoops. And then boom, from false moves, from fast moves in the opposite direction, there's still a chance. Again, we're going back. Let's go weekly on this chart so you see. You know, it was back here in 2000, 2001, 2002, right? Nothing is saying that we can't revisit 119, 120 on the dollar index. And what kind of environment would that be? That'd be pretty rough for stocks. So just be careful, you know, watching the dollar index, DXY. That's a big deal. And just looking at finishing up 10-year spread. You know, again, we haven't seen 10 years rising like this in a long time. They're challenging 4% again. They're right there. A break above 4.25. And we could get to 5. I, I 5.2, 5.0. Again, go to the weekly. You know, this was a very important area many, many, many times over, right? So TNX is rising, right? 10-year uh, yield is rising. Dollar is rising. It's going to be a very tough time for stocks, in my opinion. Very, very tough time. So we're starting to see that move higher now, potentially taking hold, right? If we see continue move higher, again, the pressure will be on equities and it'll be a risk off type environment. Okay, so just be aware of that. Um, gold, you know, safe haven, nope, right? I mean, it hasn't been good, you know, since the end of January. So gold is not a safe haven, GDX, absolutely brutal so gold not a safe haven all right all right so let's cap it all together um there is a lot of questions about what is going on as far as direction in the market i think that we have the dollar and the 10-year yield especially the dollar really driving things we're in this chop no man land uh but we have specific levels to watch right Dollar continues higher. I think we take out these levels and, you know, a more bearish stance would warrant. Right now, I think cash is a position and trading very, very small makes sense, if at all. And um, and just letting things play out. Sitting on the hands is tough. It's really, really tough because, you know, we like to trade. But there's times to be aggressive in the market, times not to be aggressive in the market. This is a time not to be aggressive in the market. It's a hard penny market, especially for if you have a bullish bias. It's a hard penny market. Wait till the market gets easier, right? You know, the month of January, market was much easier, right? From October until, you know, basically December, market was much easier. This is a, you know, wait for the easiness to, to come back, right? And um, and that's, that's what we got. State of the market. Appreciate you guys uh, subscribing to my channel. Thank you very much. At AlphaCharts365 on Twitter. Make sure you follow me over there. And you guys have a great day. Good luck this week.